So our alternate title for this list would have been Top 10 Ways to Kill a Franchise. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 sequels ruined by greed. For more gaming videos, check out our new spin-off channel, Mojo Plays, for in-depth reviews, thoughtful video essays, detailed character origins, and insightful commentary. Mojo Plays. Game smarter. For this list, we're looking at video game sequels that have been notorious for nickel and diming gamers, whether it be through pay-to-win systems, crappy microtransactions, or something else that's equally scummy and shallow. Number 10. Tetris. EA, how did you manage to screw up Tetris? This updated mobile version of the timeless classic did not get the gameplay wrong. It was just a lousy business model. You pay for a $30 subscription service to Tetris. If $30 is chump change to you, you then get exclusive offers on microtransactions. Everyone loves microtransactions, right? Ready for the real kicker? The version you get now wasn't even the original release. EA removed the original, which had more game modes, and replaced it with this money-hungry version. Nope, this wasn't an update, they actually just pulled the game from the stores and re-released it. All this for Tetris. Tetris. Number 9, Sim City. Hmm, I wonder who published this one, complete with an orchestra of long load times, a bad DRM policy, and a demand for users to constantly have an internet connection, even in offline modes. Oh, Electronic Arts, what was so hard about making a city building simulator? Well, according to them, it would take a long time to engineer a game into having an offline mode. Players, of course, quickly debunked this lie when they found a single line of code could be deleted to make the game completely playable offline. Okay, big publisher, you want to run that lie by us again? Number 8, Dead Space 3. Do you sometimes wish you could fork over extra cash so you could see the game's ending? Well, neither do we. So it's a bit of a head-scratcher that EA decided to load this game up with DLC packs that allow you to bypass almost any and all obstacles with upgraded gear. Yeah, it's that overpowered. Plus, if you want to see the true ending of the game, you better be prepared to cough up an extra 10 bucks. What a way to kill a franchise, boys. Number 7, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Nope, we're not saying that Hideo Kojima snuck microtransactions into his game. Pitchforks down, people. Konami put microtransactions in. And this was sometime after launch. Not only was the forward operating basis feature locked behind a paywall, but Konami also sold what was called base insurance. You got a favorite staff member you don't want other players stealing? Konami will recover what was stolen from you for a fee. Do you want to save 15% or more? We doubt it. Your best option is just not to play this one online. It's got a very good single player mode. We're ready to strike back. Say the word. Number 6. Microsoft Solitaire Collection. Solitaire, which has been a staple of Microsoft's computers since the company's first products. While not every computer has had the likes of Space Pinball 3D or Minesweeper, we could always count on Solitaire for a good, if somewhat boring time if our internet was out. For some reason, Microsoft wants to cash in on that game too though. Really? After two decades of free Solitaire? Microsoft Solitaire Collection relies on a freemium adware model. Because yeah, we love being advertised too when we're just trying to play some freaking cards. Selling computers, apparently, just isn't enough. Number 5. Plants vs. Zombies 2 How do you manage to decimate the sequel to an award-winning mobile game? Well, put up a paywall, of course. And EA managed to take that wall and build it a few feet higher. As you progress, you'll find difficulty spiking so high that you'll be resorting to spending money on plant food just to power through. That is, if you have enough world keys to unlock the next set of levels. Did we mention that world keys can be purchased? Yep, not only do power-ups come with a price tag, but progression does too, because 
money. Number four, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. Your chance to customize your Deus Ex experience from the very beginning by choosing the pre-order rewards you want. Pre-ordering a game has its pros and cons. You can pay portions off however much you like, whenever you like. But when a game or company starts showing reliance on those sales, things get kind of icky kind of quicky. When Square Enix launched the Augment Your Pre-Order campaign, gamers lashed back pretty hard. So hard that Square cancelled the entire event. It came across as a bad Kickstarter campaign with no rewards to make it worthwhile. Ooh, wait, no, 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 hold on. A new outfit for Jensen and a few days of early access? Come on, just get the damn game out, guys. Pre-orders can be cancelled in a heartbeat, you know. Oh, wait, you put microtransactions for consumable items in the main menu, too. Good stuff, good stuff. You should enjoy it, McCready. They have colors and shapes. Just remember, red means bad. Number three, The Sims 4. Don't let those smiling, charming faces fool ya. The Sims 4 is just as money-grubbing as the rest of the other games we've seen so far. I mean, how do you have so much DLC that there are entire playlists for all the trailers and charts on what each content pack comes with? Are you freaking kidding me? For those of us who don't want to fork over the extra cash, it's like we're missing 75% of the game. Not only do you charge a full $60 at launch, but you're charging another $50 or $60 for PS4 and Xbox users? Really? For a game that came out like three years ago? Come on! <laughs> Number 2. Dungeon Keeper Mobile How shady and vile do you have to be to shell out for a mobile game that forces players to spend money on wait times? Okay, excuse me, excuse me. Cool downs. I mean, okay, let's back up. There's tons of games that already do this. Not that this comes off as any less greedy. However, this was, and still is, the worst of the bunch. You gotta wait days just to build a new section of your dungeon. It's microtransactions at its worst, and Dungeon Keeper Mobile single-handedly ruined what was a solid franchise with a great reputation. Okay, so who published this one now? Number 1. Star Wars Battlefront 2 What seems like the best Star Wars game in a long time quickly became one of the worst in the franchise. Even though a decent portion of the game was solid, it was tainted by the presence of loot boxes, a pay-to-win progression system, and a half-assed single-player campaign. Players were so outraged that it led to a massive boycott, causing the game to sell well under the publisher's expectations. Microtransactions and pay-to-win systems would later plague EA's other franchises like Need for Speed and UFC. So, in retrospect, with a whopping 7 out of 10 entries, Electronic Arts kinda dominated this list, eh? What a shame, what a shame. Resistance, rebellion, defiance. These are concepts that cannot be allowed to persist. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.